today I'm going to build on the track that we started last week. And if you haven't watched that video, I'll put a link up here for you. It, those are tools that will help you detect malware if it's installed on your system or not. I want to, I want to take this a, a different way. Rather than go down through all the pros and cons and make this a cure for a, your insomnia, I don't want to do that. Instead, let's take let's take practical examples and stories of of people that I know, and we'll we'll insert fake names so you, they'll protect them a little bit and uh, talk about how these four people use uh, Linux. Hi, I'm DJ Ware, and this is the Cyber Gizmo. So I have four people. We're going to call them Joe, Jill, Alice, and Ted. So let's look at Joe and Jill first. They're kind of typical users. They're managing files. They're browsing the web. They're doing some work from home. Let's, let's, look, let's look at them, and they've decided they want to start with Linux Mint uh, because they've heard that that's an easy start. They, uh, they think that that's a good match for them. And they want to use it on their laptops, and uh, and so that they think is a good a good way of going. So Joe and Jill have discovered Linux, and they are finding it that it's not only a lot simpler than they thought it would be, but they're discovering that there's some ways that they can make it secure and a lot more private. So and they're kind of relieved that Linux Mint kind of feels familiar to them. Uh, it it kind of looks like the Windows that they started out with, Windows 7, is actually what it's patterned after. So, uh, and they can still browse the web, they can manage their files, and they can do everything that they used to do, except now their system, the operating system, isn't collecting data on them and posting it to uh, the cloud on their in the background. For Joe and Jill, what is the things they should do? when they're secure in their systems. This probably applies to Alice and Ted as well, but the first thing is to secure your perimeter. You want to have a defined um, break between you and the internet, and that break should be defined with a firewall. Now you can put the firewall on your Linux machine. You can use one of the, one of the most least Obtrusive ones is the uncomplicated firewall or UFW. It won't interfere with gameplay that Ted is going to be concerned about, and it will do the kinds of things that you need it to do in order to prevent someone from the outside of writing back on your IP address and into your system. So you do have, want to have that defined perimeter with a firewall that's protected. That's step one. Number two. You want to reduce the risk of having your data be exfiltrated off your system. The best way to do that is to encrypt it by itself, not as part of, of a, uh, whole, a, di a whole disk encryption method, because that only encrypts until you boot into the, into the system and log on. Once you've logged on, your data is unencrypted and available to anyone. So what I'm saying is you want to use a tool that allows you to secure that data and, and encrypt it separately from your hard drive. Better still, encrypt it and don't store it on laptops or systems that travel with you. Put them on a home server uh, that has access from uh, your machines. You can use NextCloud or OwnCloud in order to help manage that. And then people within uh, your family can post and pull data down and share it as someone adds it. So that's kind of a nice way to do that. Third, secure access to your private apps. If you got applications that are being used to access your healthcare records, your financial data, and so forth, put them someplace and lock them down. The best way is to use one of these. Um, you don't have to go to this extreme. This this actually <laughs> encrypts the data and keeps it off of your machine. So it, it keeps it here. And even if you lose this, uh, and you'll want to back this up periodically to your home server too. But uh, yeah, if you lose this, there's no chance that someone can exfiltrate the data without destroying it. So that's number three. Number four, 
keep your system up to date so that it's not being made vulnerable to software that is has weaknesses in it or discovered security issues with it. That's one of the reasons why we always say make sure you update frequently. And not only update frequently, but backup frequently as well. Make sure that if you are backing up to a, a cloud environment that you're encrypting, that that data is encrypted before it goes. You don't want to store unencrypted data on those platforms because those aren't yours. And do you trust them? Do you trust them to maintain them? There's been a lot of break-ins on those kinds of servers over the years. And you don't want your data to be one of them. If they break in, they get encrypted data, and that's all they get. I would say number five is, pro is, is protect what you say online. The old adage, don't tell somebody something that you wouldn't tell your grandmother. I think that is probably the most... The, mo the best advice I ever got was that you don't, if, you're not gonna, if you're not willing to tell your grandmother about it, why would you tell a complete stranger about it? So, yeah, don't share. Assume that even if you're talking to somebody you know, and especially on social media where anybody can come stumbling in and read your stuff, make sure that if you are using those kinds of applications, make sure that you're setting your security profiles to only share with others in your group, family, whatever, so that that kind of data isn't going out. And then compartmentalize what you're saying. You know, keep family data to family, keep friend data to friends, and then keep people that, that are following you at arm's length, right? So they don't publish much there for them. Uh, so the best the best thing is get off of those platforms to begin with. Get off of Facebook. You know, I don't know how many times we've we've said that over the years. Get off of it. And you take your friends and tell them, hey, you're being tracked. People are finding out about what you're doing. They know all about you. They probably know more about you than you know about your own family. So yeah, if if that appeals to you, it doesn't appeal to me. Uh, if it appeals to you, then go right ahead. Stay on it. <laughs> several different browsers which offer security features, one of which is Firefox, there's Brave, there's Chromium, but not Chrome, Chromium, which has a lot of the data tracking features turned off and disabled because the code has been removed. So, and they've also found that they can install a VPN, which will help somewhat to prevent their geolocation data from being transmitted. And that will trigger ads from people in your local area. And so without that, they can't get a, an absolute fix on where you uh, live. If you change your location frequently with a VPN, that gets even harder for them to collate your data together. Although there are some tricks you can do to do that. They've enabled full disk encryption. so. When their data is, when their laptops are, are shut down, they can, be, they can be reasonably secure that it would be, if the laptop were stolen, that an, a, a would-be attacker wouldn't be able to gain access to their machine without destroying the data that's installed on it. So let's talk a little bit about Alice. Alice is a social media hound. She loves going on and talking to her friends. She has, she's a member of several groups uh, that uh, bring people together. Maybe she, they have a hobby that's common. She has a hobby that's common with a lot of other different people, and they share ideas, post and swap photos of what they're doing and, and share ideas that way. So, But she's been using Facebook, and then she's the one that's starting to complain that, that she doesn't like what Facebook has been doing over time. Uh, and she feels like she's being violated. She's not ready to give up on social media, but she wants more control over the data that these companies collect. Now, Linux by itself isn't going to solve that problem, right? Because the data collection is done while you're inside the app. And it leaves tracker cookies in your browser so that it continues to track you no matter where you go elsewhere in the web. And there's a number of, of websites that use these tracking cookies 
in order to determine where you've been, where you are now, what you're looking at, so that they can sell that data to ad to the ad agencies or to the people that want to sell products to you that you would be interested in. Targeted marketing, that's what it's all about. She doesn't really want to switch, but she's ready to switch off of Google Chrome to begin with because she is she's learned that that's a problem. So she wants to go to a browser that is is secure. She tries a number of them, and she settles to start with on Brave. And there's a number of other ones that, because Brave has something similar to what she's familiar with, and she's learned that there is an incognito mode. There's also a tour mode that she can use when she's browsing for things that she doesn't particularly want to share with the world. But that still leaves the social media site itself. Clearly, she's going to have to get off of that. The first thing that she could do is to put uBlock Origin down on her our system. Now, I know this is old advice, and a lot of people have said this before, but at least that will prevent your system from, uh, from not only the ads, but also it blocks the tracking cookies that these sites will place in your browser so that they can continue to follow you. Now, Facebook is particularly difficult because they have learned of ways to circumvent the even uBlock origin. So she's she's going to she's reducing the amount of time she spends on Facebook and she's starting to explore other social media sites like Mastodon and uh, Discord that allows her to join groups that just like Facebook did but doesn't have the degree of privacy invasion that Facebook has. So she's trying to reduce it. She can't eliminate it completely because her friends are all on Facebook and their friends are on Facebook. And that's the problem. That's the big issue with trying to get people weaned off of those platforms is if your friends don't come with you, then you end up going back. So this next one is Ted and Ted is an active gamer. So I, I don't, I don't, I'm not a gamer, but here's what I suggest that we do here. So I'm not going to talk so much about what Ted should do with his gaming, but rather how Ted should secure his Linux first before installing his games on his machine and, and, and how also to use things like OBS for streaming the game to either Twitch or YouTube so or or so forth. So so Ted's a passionate gamer and he's also a streamer. He streams his games as uh, he goes along, but he's worried about losing access to his favorite games and streaming tools like uh, OBS and the plugins that he's built up and been able to use. He's a little bit worried about making the transition over to Linux. Will he be able to continue to do things the way he's used to doing it? And will he be able to, to play the same games? Well, Linux has come a long way, both with Lutris and ProtonDB. But, you know, to tell you the truth, there are still issues uh, with Linux, particularly with games that have, uh, have anti-cheat software in embedded in them. The anti-cheat software flags Linux as a potential cheating and so blocks uh, a Linux operating system from using the games. Sometimes it'll just misbehave altogether and crash the game before it launches. OBS Studio, the problem with it is that the plugins that are available for it usually come on the heels of the ones that are available for Windows, if at all. So my suggestion for Ted is when he runs into those plugins, he needs to get his friends that are using Linux to help all contact that developer and say, hey, we're interested in using this plugin. Can you take the time and provide that feature on Linux as well? That's all I had for today. I hope you enjoyed the video. Please like and subscribe. I hope to see you in the next one and bye for now.